You are an ancient builder, one of the last survivors of a civilization before ours, but you need help learning the game first, so you've come here. Yes, it's time to learn the two to four player game Ancient Knowledge from Yellow who helped sponsor this video. In Ancient Knowledge, players will build an engine out of monuments, collect useful artifacts, and discover technologies, all while time marches on and your monuments get closer and closer to belonging to the past. It's up to you to collect as much knowledge as possible along the way before it's lost forever. But before you start collecting all of that precious knowledge, you'll need to learn to set up the game and understand your play area. So let's get started. Each player chooses a builder board and places it in front of them. There are some areas on and around the board that players should be familiar with. At the top is the timeline where you'll place monument cards, which slide to the left as the game goes on. Monuments often hold an amount of knowledge to be collected while they're in your timeline. The area to the left of your board is called the past. Monument cards that have left your timeline will go here. In fact, once a player has 14 monuments in their past, the end of the game will be triggered. The five spaces in the middle of your board are where you'll place artifacts. These are powerful cards that have unique effects on an ongoing basis or at a specific phase during your turn. Technology cards are stored to the right of your board and sorted in the three corresponding categories, Ancient, Writing, and Secret. And there's no limit to the number of technology cards you can collect. And now that you understand your builder board a little bit better and the areas around it, we can move on to the rest of setup. Randomly choose a first player and give them the first player marker. They'll put this on the table in front of them. I'll assume that this is your first game, so before shuffling all of the builder cards, find the four sets of six starting cards, each marked accordingly in the lower right hand corner. Each player randomly gets one set, with any remaining shuffled into the rest of the builder cards, forming a deck on the table within reach of all players. And if it's not your first game, you can alternatively deal 10 cards to each player at the table. They'll keep six of those as their starting hand, discarding the rest. Either way, at higher player counts, the third and the fourth player at the table will get one extra card. Next, place the three technology tiles in the center of the table so that there are two for level one and one for level two. Shuffle all the level one technology cards together and randomly place three face up on each of the level one tiles. Also, shuffle the level two technology tiles and randomly place three of those face up on the level two tile. Then, place the remaining cards in two separate decks alongside the tiles. Finally, place all the knowledge tokens within reach of all players. There are both one and five value tokens, and you can feel free to make change at any time. And now that the game is all set up, let's talk about what a player will do on their turn. A game of ancient knowledge is played over an unlimited number of rounds until the game end is triggered when one player has 14 cards in their past. Starting with the first player and proceeding clockwise, each player takes a turn by completing the following three phases in order. The action phase, the timeline phase, and the decline phase. During the action phase, you will take two actions from an available five options, and you can take the same action twice if you'd like. The first one is to create. This allows you to play a monument or an artifact card. Let's take a quick look at both of those cards so you can understand the information on them. There are three categories of monument cards, denoted by their color and symbol in the upper left hand corner. Artifact cards are purple and show this symbol instead. Artifacts are placed on the associated spaces on your board, while monuments go above your board in your timeline. To create a monument, choose one from your hand and add it to your timeline following these steps. First, if this symbol appears near the top left of the card, discard as many cards from your hand as indicated, as an additional cost. So, in this case, you would need to discard an additional two cards. If you cannot discard enough cards, you cannot create that monument. Next, place the chosen card in its starting space, shown in the circle right here below the card type. Each position on your timeline can hold up to two cards. The first card in a position is placed just above your timeline. 
if a second card would ever be added to a position, it's placed above the card already there. If at some point the space just above your timeline is empty, you must move any card above it down to fill the space. However, you cannot voluntarily reverse the position of two monuments in the same space. You do have the ability to adjust the position of a monument, but only when you're creating it. To play a monument to a different space than the one shown on the card, you may discard a number of additional cards from your hand equal to the difference between the two spaces. For example, the Fairy's Rock would normally be played into the second position on your timeline, but you could discard one additional card to play it in the first spot, or even in the third, one space away. You can never play a monument directly into your past, though. And note that some monuments include this lock symbol. These monuments must always be played in the space indicated on the card and cannot be repositioned when they're created. Certain card effects refer to adjacent monuments. Monuments are considered adjacent if they're placed in the same space, one above the other, or in the same row side by side. So, two diagonal monuments are not adjacent. Next, add as many knowledge tokens to the card as the number shown in the colored band here. This is the amount of knowledge that you will want to remove from the card before it ultimately falls into decline. Finally, if this symbol appears on the card here, immediately apply the effect detailed at the bottom of the card. If you cannot apply the full effect, apply as much as possible. For example, when creating the Great Sphinx of Giza, you would add two knowledge tokens from the reserve to any monuments in each of your opponent's timelines. To create an artifact, choose one from your hand and play it to one of the available spaces on your board. An artifact can never be covered by another one, so if all five of your spaces are occupied, you can no longer play artifacts. Although some card effects will let you discard artifacts that you've played. The next option is to learn. This action allows you to claim one technology card from the center of the table. Choose an available level one or two technology card and check its requirements if it has any here in this box. For example, you would already need to have three artifacts on your board in order to select this technology. If there are no requirements or you fulfill those on the card, place it in your collection to the right of your board in the corresponding row. And again, if the card has this symbol, immediately apply its effect as much as possible. If instead it has this symbol, then it will provide victory points at the end of the game. Do not refill the technology tiles when you take a card, though. Wait until there is just a single card on a tile, discard it, and refill the tile with three new technology cards from the corresponding deck. If one of the technology decks ever runs out, shuffle its discard pile and form a new one. And in the rare case that there are not enough cards to refill a tile, put the cards and the tile back in the box. In the middle of the game, as soon as one player has seven cards in their past, that player will choose a level one technology tile and flip it to its level two side. Discard the level 1 cards that were on it and refill it with level 2 cards. And note that this will only happen once during the game. The archive action is an important one. This allows you to remove knowledge tiles from the monuments in your timeline. Discard as many cards from your hand as you want, and for each one, remove one knowledge token from a monument in your timeline and return it to the reserve. If removing multiple knowledge tokens in this way, they may be taken from multiple monuments if you choose. Note, however, that you cannot discard any more cards if there are no more knowledge tokens in your timeline. The next action is to excavate, and this allows you to use the monuments in your past in order to draw more cards. Rotate as many monument cards in your past as you like, and for each card rotated this way, draw two builder cards into your hand. Rotated monuments in your past must be straightened by card effects before you can rotate them again, though. Finally, the search action also allows you to draw cards, but only little by little. When you search, simply draw one card from the builder deck and add it to your hand. This is not the most efficient way to draw cards, though, so it may be better to make quick use of monuments in your past in order to use the excavate action.
However you collect cards, remember that you can never have more than 10 cards in your hand. Just stop drawing cards immediately once you have 10. And if the builder deck is ever empty, shuffle the discard pile and create a new one. Once you've completed any two of these actions, it's time to move on to the timeline phase of your turn. This is when certain monuments and artifacts will have effects that trigger. In any order you choose, apply the effects of each of your monument and artifact cards in your play area that have this symbol on them. There are a variety of effects on these cards, so expect to discover a lot of synergies and combos depending on the order in which you trigger them. And remember, once monuments are in your past, their effects are never active during the game. The last phase of each player's turn is to decline. During this phase, time has taken its toll and some knowledge may be lost. Declining a monument means to remove it from the first space of your timeline and move it into your past. When this happens, follow these steps for each card going into decline. First, if it has this symbol, apply its effect. For example, as this card falls into decline, you may learn one technology if you fulfill its requirements. Next, if it has any knowledge tokens on it at all, immediately move them to the lost knowledge zone on your board. They are now lost knowledge. Finally, move the card to your past on the left side of your board. And remember, this card is no longer in play and its effects are not available for the rest of the game. After declining all of the cards in your first space, be sure to check your past to see if you have 7 or 14 cards. If you're the first player with 7 cards, remember to update the technology tiles like I described earlier. If you have 14, you've just triggered the end of the game. At the end of the decline phase, finish your turn by sliding all monuments still in your timeline, along with their knowledge, one space to the left. So you'll notice that any cards now in the first space will go into decline on your next turn. And remember, artifacts stay in their spaces and do not move. Then the next player begins their turn with their action phase, and play continues like this around the table until the end game is triggered, when one player has at least 14 cards in their past. Once this happens, play continues around the table until all players have taken the same number of turns, and then you can proceed to final scoring. Each player adds up their total victory points, starting with those visible here on each monument card in their past. Next, add victory points from certain monument cards in your past that have endgame scoring effects. Then add the points from each of your level 2 technology cards. And finally, each player will gain one victory point for each card remaining in their timeline and lose one victory point for each lost knowledge token on their board. The player with the most points is the winner. And if there's a tie, it's the player with the least lost knowledge that will win the game. And if there's still a tie, it's the player who's the most ancient at the table that wins the game. And you now know how to play ancient knowledge. But if you have any more questions about the game or how it's played, please make them in the comments below. I'll be happy to get down there and answer whatever I can. Until next time, though, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then.